Jen, how's it going today? Oh my goodness, we're having a party here. You have got a lot going on. You've got the Farmer and the Bell, Saving Santa Land. This is your baby. This is your movie. And you and I actually connected earlier this year and had a chance to talk about the film. Now here you are promoting the movie, pushing it out there. What can you tell us? Let's say that there is somebody watching right now. They have not heard about the film. They don't know anything about it, but they love a good holiday movie. What's the what's the sort of breakdown on the film? What's the elevator pitch? Oh my goodness. Okay, so it is a fun family Christmas movie for all ages. And it is like laugh out loud funny and it's heartwarming in your belly. Some people say, you know, it's like a Hallmark movie, but it's deeper and it's funnier. Um, you know, when we went into production, I always had Home Alone in my mind. So you have some, like a horse in a pink onesie. You have pigs with uh, Santa hats on. <laughs> and so you have these little silly things that make us laugh. You've got cows. I'm in the middle of a cow pasture and chickens and goats. And then you have the romance where my real life husband and I really fall in love and you have our wedding at the end. So that's like the hallmark element of it. And then the underbelly, the story follows my character who loses this heirloom bracelet that her Grammy through the generations passes down and says, beauty is on the inside. And so she loses this bracelet filled with biblical inscriptions and where at Santa land in the pigs. And so as an adult, as an aged out model, washed up, only getting diaper jobs. She has to go and find that bracelet to see really where does beauty come from? And so that is The Farmer in the Bell, Saving Santa Land. That was a really good breakdown of the film. Now, you mentioned something in the mix there, and people might not realize this. You and your real life husband, as you, as you said, star in this film. What was that like to work with your husband on a theatrical, on a, on a film like this? <laughs> well, he and I, we've been in over like, I think it's close to 20 projects together. We were met on a movie set. He was the bad guy. I was a good girl and a uh, match made in heaven, right? He is one of the most wonderful people to ever work with as producers, we own the new franchise, The Farmer and the Bell. And I'm the creative, he's the logistical. And so I'll have this idea, this vision, like the theatrical. I'll say, Jim, God has given me this idea of bringing the movie to theaters that are struggling with COVID. And let's bring a Christian bookstore also struggling, struggling to stay open. And let's have Christmas shopping at the theater. And because we have merchandise, we've got... <gasps> bracelets and children's books by Mike Naraki and, and devotionals and soundtracks and DVDs and more. And let's bring Christmas caroling because when we sing, it fills our heart with Jesus. And so we bring in youth groups coming in to sing Christmas carols. And it's a festival that we're having at theaters. And I said, Jim, this is what I'm visioning. And he says, okay, honey, let's do it. And then he'll strategically provide a pathway and then I go about and I execute it. And so we work extraordinarily well as a team. And most importantly, you know, when I get overwhelmed because I, I want everything to be beautifully executed, he will always remind me, Jen, when, and I was sharing this with you earlier, when God gives us a passion and a ministry, Satan wants to speed us up. So we need to stop and we need to pray and we need to surrender back into Jesus's arms and to go back to the scripture verse, which is the main premise of the farmer in the bell is to use whatever gift we've received to serve others. And that's what makes us beautiful when we serve others with joy. And that's really where beauty comes from. You know, when you, when you really break it down to the core root of beauty, it's joy. It's the joy of Jesus. That's a great word. And, it, and it's so true. And I know this is a project, again, that means so much to you and to your husband. And, you know, for those who are watching right now, maybe you have seen it. This is a, you know, is a project that that is especially also on Pure Flix on the platform. It's now going to be hitting theaters as well. And so I love that you guys created this experience at the theater too, right? Where you were envisioning all of these things. And I have to say, you the details in what you put together for this film. You have the movie and then you have the books, the bracelet, you have all these other things that 
really help bring that message home. You you guys have worked so hard on this and the movie has such a positive message. Mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted to ask you where this message came from. What was the impetus for all of this? Yeah. It came from my personal story when when I was a teenager. I always wanted to be a model and I was a little overweight and um, I would look at magazines and celebrities and I would try to do my hair like them and my makeup. And I thought that's what I needed to do to be liked and to be popular and to fit in. And, um, and I wanted to always be in the cool crowd, but I, I just never was accepted. And, um, and then I wanted to pursue acting and I was on the cheerleading squad. I got kicked off the cheerleading squad. Um, because I missed a practice. And, um, and so that always stuck in the core of me. And then when I started to work as an actor and, and a model, I realized, wow, my value is so wrapped up in my physical that I've really lost touch with the truth that my body and my soul are marvelously made. And so when I met Jim, um, he really helped me reveal that, that, who I am and that I am a masterpiece in Jesus. And I wanted to share that with other girls to help other girls overcome those lies that we struggle so much with. 90% of women. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. It's like with the research we did, it's 90% of girls. So, and women and of all ages. And when the movie came out, we've sold thousands of these bracelets because women are seeing the movie saying, I need this. I feel like my value is based on my appearance and I need the message. And we want to help everybody overcome the lies that we have to feel like we need to look enough to get the, get the likes, the shares on social media, the the certain image and all, all of that sort of stuff. So that's why the devotional creates how we do that. It's the pathway. It unlocks the revelation that is inscribed on the bracelet and um, and so this becomes just a beautiful tool that's really on trend and lovely, but also speaks to the depths and the soul that our body and soul are marvelously made, as it tells us in Psalms. Yeah, such a such a powerful message. And when I when I interrupted you, and I apologize, I was actually going to say, "What a time to be doing this! This is what culture needs." And then you went right into those statistics that show it's like you were reading my mind where we are right now and how important these positive messages are to be driving home um, to women, young women, and and also young boys too. I think this is something that really is affecting everyone. And you've been so passionate about this. You've done such a wonderful job. What is your hope at the end of the day when, when all is said and done, when people watch this film, what do you want them to leave feeling? Um, two things. One, I want the family to be like, oh, this is going to be our new Christmas tradition. <laughs> Before Christmas, around Thanksgiving, let's usher in the Christmas spirit by watching The Farmer and the Mouse, saving Santa Land. And for the girls in the quiets of their heart, women to grandmas, to the kids, when they go to sleep at night and when they look in the mirror when nobody else is there, for them to see themselves as a masterpiece, knowing that God created them uniquely, wonderfully with a purpose, and they don't need to look a certain way to be loved, but they could hold on to the prayer to grasp Jesus' hand and to say, how wide, high, long, and deep Jesus' love is for you. And that's what's written on the the heart and the bracelet that you hold on as if you're holding on to Jesus' hand. That's what I really want my husband and I, and the 400 plus people who worked on this movie and this mission, that's what we want people to be touched by is the grace of God and heal. Wow. That is, that is powerful. And it's amazing to me, you mentioned the 400 plus people. I mean, such a massive team to put a movie like this together and a movie with a mission, a movie, like you said, that is funny, that has amazing content And that makes us laugh and cry and feel all sorts of different things. And it's not just, I mean, there's a million Christmas movies out there. This is really a unique film. And again, for those watching, we're talking about The Farmer and The Bell, Saving Santa Land. Uh, It's it's a film that's coming to theaters. It's also a film, if you are a Pure Flix member, that you can watch right now on Pure Flix as well. Now, you've done a lot of films. You've done a lot of movies. There's another film that you worked on called Hope for the Mm -hmm. Holidays. 
And that one came out um, in 2020, and it's going to also uh, be hitting Pure Flix, and people will get a chance to to watch that and check it out. But what was it like to work on that project? I'm always interested to hear sort of the behind the scenes, what it's like to to put a movie together. Oh, Ricky Borba, he is the director of it, and gosh, what a man of joy and grace and peace in creativity and he and I we met years ago and I was cast because a friend Gigi Orsello which meant people are gonna see coming out on family camp I'm so excited for Gigi um she's also on secret agent she's the lead of secret agent the female lead um she recommended me for the role and when we showed up on set you know like Ricky and Gigi and I we would we would sneak away and we would pray and we would pray for production and we would laugh. And, you know, I would be like, Ricky, this feels like a bubble bath because this production was so beautifully run. It was so calm. There was no craziness happening. Like I've seen on a lot of production sets and uh, we really hope everybody enjoys hope for the holidays. It was actually originally called the talking tree. You'll have to watch it to understand why it was called the talking tree. And then they changed the title to hope for the holidays. Well, that's really cool. And I, I just want to highlight one thing there before we come to a close here. You mentioned that you guys would pray and you've done a lot of movies. You've done a lot of, of content. Is is there a difference? It almost seems like a silly question, but I'm curious from your perspective. Is there a difference on a film like that where you're praying for the cast mm. and the crew and a film where you're not praying? I mean, do you notice a, a different feel? Yeah, you definitely do. Um when I was on a movie called Dragon Day, not a Christian film, but run by some Christians, we had no spiritual warfare. It was easy. <laughs> then I work on a movie called Alone Yet Not Alone, uh, a $4 million plus dollar movie, a Christian movie, a powerful mission movie. And we had, unfortunately, unfortunately, horrific things destroy the movie, including somebody's life who passed away. So on Farmer and the Bell, we had a, a prayer team. Susan Shear ran it. We had about 50 people and they were on the call sheet. And it, on the top of our call sheet, it said prayer leader. So on set, any moment you struggled, you would text Susan and she would send that prayer out to our 50 people and they would begin interceding. And we saw weather change. We had a horrible bout of a severe flu-like illness that came in and Melissa and Daniel Bruner came in. They helped administer um, health care because Daniel's a doctor. Um, and we saw lives start to be cultivated and changed because of Jesus Christ from the power of prayer. So from weather crowds about to power down storms to shifting, and this is a cool little, do I have time to share a 30 second story? Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. So in the farmer in the Bell Savings Santa Plan, two locations that we had changed because of weather. One, um, the loft where the two little kids, they meet in the beginning of the movie. We see them as adults meeting the same hayloft. We were supposed to do that on a bridge because it was about bridge therapy going from the, the old junk in our life into the health of Jesus healing. So we were doing it on a bridge for like this allegory. Well, it was to downpour and we needed to change the location and our writer, Bob signs. And our director, Wes Llewellyn, said, let's put it in the loft. And I have to say, when you watch the movie, let me know what you think. But my husband and me are in the loft falling in love with the magical snow. It was as if God divinely kissed and prepared that location because it was not going to be there. It was going to be on a bridge. And second, during the Christmas tree farm, it's downpouring. We prayed weather would shift. And that day it downpoured. And that scene for those script writers or people who like movie setups, that scene becomes a visual setup for a payoff later on in the movie because of how busy the Christmas tree farm is in the rain. God said, we're going to make it rain. And who goes Christmas shopping in the rain except for people at a very busy Christmas farm? So uh, you have to watch the movie to understand why that's important. Well, I have seen it and I love those scenes. My whole family watched the movie and my kids loved it. And I'm sure we're going to be watching it. It'll be our tradition as well. So I'm excited to, to integrate that in. And 
I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much. Where can people go to find out more about the film? And obviously they can watch it on Pure Books, but it's also showing. Uh, where can they go for that? Yeah, so um, wherever you live in across America, we're in hand-selected theaters. You could find that theater list on Facebook um, and our Instagram. So we're at Farmer Bell Film. Farmer and Bell, B-E-L-L-E, like Beauty and the Beast Bell, Bell, B-E-L-L-E, film. And if you show up at a theater or when you're watching Pure Flix, take a photo and hashtag the Farmer and the Bell, and then do, use the handle, tag us at Farmer Bell Film, and our, our team will repost your photo and give you a shout out. But that's the way they could find out more about it is on our socials. And then we have our website where you could go Christmas shopping, thefarmerandthebell.net. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Oh my goodness, Billy. What a joy. I just love Pure Flix and I'm just so excited to be able to be with you and, and say hi to everybody. <laughs> we'll have to have you back very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>